church that will bind together and pray for a brother and sister. Hallelujah. Classes can be departed. It's good to see them here today. We will continue to pray for them. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Isn't God wonderful? Hallelujah, he's been so good. I know I every time I get up here, I go on a little rant about how God good is, but I don't apologize because he's been so good. And I am so dependent upon him. Hallelujah. And it seems like sometimes, you know, your pride gets in the way and it doesn't take very long before you realize you're just are dependent on God and I'm so thankful that he's there and he's faithful and he's merciful and he's gracious he doesn't hit you over the head he lifts you up he brings you back to reality it's kind of up to you how bad it really is because he confronts you with truths that you can't you can't deny it you can't deceive truth you can't it's just truth. It's real. And so if you, if you go against truth, it's harder on you. So it may feel like you're getting hit over the head, but it's, it's really, at the end of the day, it's you. And that, that's what I'm going to speak on today. But on this Thanksgiving morning, I wonder if we could just stand to our feet just give God some praise and thanksgiving for all that he's done and all that he's doing. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for your mercy, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for all that you do, Lord. I praise you and I glorify you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you for all that you do. We worship you for who you are, Lord Jesus. Great and wonderful and mighty God. Hallelujah, Jesus, maker and breaker of kingdoms, maker and breaker of men, maker and breaker of worlds and heavens. Hallelujah, Jesus, you are wonderful. You are awesome and mighty in this place, Lord God. Release your angels in this place, Lord God, to minister to your saints, Lord, today. We thank you for it. We put our trust in you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you do. Bless your people here today, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to 1 John 5, 6.
This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. In John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And we know Jesus is the foundation of truth. And it's his spirit that gives the inspiration of, of the word of God, which is truth. And he is the word. We know that Jesus is the word and that he is truth. And that by him all truth is communicated to men and women. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless this people today. We ask you to bless your word, Lord God, here today that I speak, Lord God, that it will take root into the hearts of your people, Lord. Help us, Lord my God, today. Help me to only hear your voice, Lord God, and speak what you want me to speak, Lord. Let your truth have its way here today, Lord God, in the minds and hearts of those that hear it. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. You may be seated. And we know that his truth endureth forever. It endureth forever. We can't really understand it forever. It means from now, from then, to eternity. We can't comprehend, but his truth endureth forever. It means that not just it's there, it endureth. It stands the test of time. Everything that it comes against, it endures I'm going to speak to you a little bit today, and the title of this message is Truth Is and Truth Says. Now, nobody likes to be lied to, and I think it's safe to say that no one here today likes to hear lies or be told lies. You ask a question, you want the truth. I don't know about you, but when I feel that someone's not telling me the truth, I feel like they're wasting my time. I mean... If I'm listening to someone and they're spinning me a, a, a bunch of falsehoods or something, I, I just don't, I feel like I'm wasting my time hearing it. It's just my time's too precious to hear lies. I want to hear the truth. Nobody likes to be lied to or told falsehoods. They just want to know the truth. They want to hear what's real, what's, what's truthful, not, not lies that will steer them the wrong direction or tell them a wrong, make them think wrongly. Now, and there's facts versus truth. I have a childhood friend. I'm still friends with him today. But when we were young, he actually, he, he was great at spinning a yard, like a spinning lies, like, and making it sound like facts. I mean, he was good. And even when we were in grade school, he wrote a whole speech for different people. One went to the finals because he, he talked about a topic and he made up so many facts. It sounded it, facts. They were all lies. But it was sounded like facts and, and very specific. And it went to the finals. Even when he went to university, he got on the debate team. And he was like, so long as you didn't call him on too much or you knew your stuff. That's the thing about truth. Truth doesn't mind being confronted. But he would sit there and he, he was a great debater if you didn't know it too much, or, or if you weren't as good a debater as him, because he said it so factual that people wouldn't call him on it. He was very good of it, but he just wove a bunch of lies with a bunch of common opinions, and, and it just, he knew how to do it. But I'm sure we all know somebody like that, that can spin lies or, or, or read something that, that is, sounds factual and come to find out it's not factual at all. So often I read stuff that, that it seems like facts, and I've even been read something and said it like it was a fact and was called on it, and boy, did I feel dumb. But it seems like the word fact is a relative term nowadays that's, that's kind of open to interpretation. And it's bad nowadays, so bad that, you know, the fact-checking is out of control, but it, but it needs to be. They even got fact-checkers checking the fact-checkers. But I know that I can go to God's word. And I know it will give me the direction and the answers I need. And I know it's true. I know his promises are true. 
I know his word is true. I know his blessings are true. I know they're yay and amen, which is truth and amen. My wife showed me something the other day that uh, the Catholic Church is coming up with, and it's called Krishlam. And, I, and of course, I fact check it. I went and checked it out. And it actually started back in the late 70s, early 80s in Nigeria, where they take Islam and Christianity and they combine it together. And Pope Francis wants to make that something worldwide. Now, anybody reading the truth shouldn't be surprised at that. It said that that was going to happen. But let me just say that it's wrong. Its beliefs are wrong. It takes away the divinity of Jesus Christ. It, it chops salvation in half. It's wrong. But the Bible said it was coming because it's truth. I don't, wanna, I don't want truth that's watered down. I don't want it diluted. Not only do I not just want, I don't want to be lied to, but I don't want half truths. I don't want, like we were talking about preacher talk today, when the devil always talked to Jesus, he left out certain words in the Bible that always half truths. If it's not all the truth, then it's a lie. I want the whole truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. I'm seeing more and more lately of the world's facts that don't line up with God's truth. If you leave any part of the truth out, it's not truth. Fact is, I should be locked up in jail or dead. But truth is, praying parents and then a praying church took me out of a pit, cleaned me up, and put me where I should be. Fact is, I was living a shameful life, and the, never, the devil never wanted me to get out of the pit I was in. But truth said, mercy and goodness would follow me all the days of my life. The fact is, the devil would have loved to have crushed me. But I love that saying, truth is, I'm still here. I'm still here. By the grace of God, I'm still here. God revealed himself to me, and I've never been the same. And the truth is, God wants to reveal himself to you today in a way that he's never done before. It doesn't matter if you've been here a hundred years or if this is your first day here. God wants to reveal to you a truth that you've never seen before. He wants to reveal in you, through his spirit, something that you've never seen before. He wants to reveal to you in a way that you can't deny that it's truth. In Acts 9.1, it says, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of, in this, of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to earth, he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why? Persecutest thou me. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And against the pricks means a goad. It's, it was a big, uh, like, stick with a spike in it. And, and basically, it was for oxen and cattle. It was like a cattle prod that got them going in the direction. Whoever was in authority had that prod and would get them going in the right direction. So that's what he's saying. You're kicking against the pricks. Like I was saying earlier, when you confront truth and aren't honest, it's a hard go. It's hard. Some people, I told someone, they're just so frustrated and angry, and I told them, you're fighting life itself. You need God. You need Jesus. You need help. And that's what Saul was doing. He was fighting against, he was fighting against the Almighty. He was saying, Saul, you're fighting a losing battle. You're kicking against the pricks. You're going against my authority. You're going against me. You're not going to win. It's hard to do that. What are you doing, Saul? And the fact is, Saul was going to kidnap Christians. And he was going to probably kill them, torture them, whatever he was going to do. He was already responsible for killing the one we know for sure. But when truth was revealed to Saul, it changed him. It changed the way it converted him. It changed his direction in life. It totally turned him around. He was confronted with tr truth, and he submitted. 
And his name was changed to Paul, and he preached the truth until the day he died. It's in Paul's writings in Corinthians that we get only what you do for Christ will last, and it's all that really matters. A pastor once said that the most frustrated and anxious and angry people in life are the ones going against God's will, fighting God's will in their life. They're most anxious and angry and frustrated. I want truth. I want truth in my life. I, I, truth trumps feelings. Truth trumps everything. I'll take truth any day of the week. I don't want to be lied to. I want to be preached truth. I want to read truth. I want to see truth. I want to know truth. And Elijah, in 2 Kings, some of us know this story, in 2 Kings 6.15, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? They were surrounded by the enemy. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes, and the young man he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Fact is, they were totally surrounded by the enemy. The truth is, there was angels all around them waiting to fight for them. The truth was revealed to the servant in a mighty way. And can I submit to you that after that servant saw that that day, he was probably totally changed. Totally and completely changed. Wouldn't you be? Truth was, is that the angels were ready to fight for him like they're ready to fight for us. They are ready to fight for you. They are ready to uphold you. They are ready to carry you. The fact is, some of us has gotten used to being surrounded by the enemy. And the enemy likes to keep us there. Just surrounded. If he's surrounded and we're not doing anything, that's, that's fine. He doesn't need to do anything else. And one, one thing I, the Lord impressed upon me is that the battle of the mind nowadays is the most prevalent thing. The battle of the mind. There's more depression. There's more anxiety. There's more mental health issues than ever before in this world. And so you feel surrounded by the enemy. You know, you got these thoughts going through your head. And we've gotten used to some of those thoughts. And the enemy lying to us. That you're a loser, you're not going to make it, that you're a failure. Let's just normalize it. You normalize it by saying, that's just me, why do I think like this? Oh, well, I'll get used to it. But it's not. It's a lie of the enemy. It's a lie, and the truth is, it's a lie from the devil, and he's a deceiver and the father of all lies. The truth is, God loves you and he cherishes you. And the angels of heaven take notice when you repent. You are important. You are the most important thing to God Almighty. Don't you settle for lies of the devil. You are precious and God wants you to live a life of joy and peace and of a sound mind. The church loves you. Hallelujah. The church loves you. I'm so thankful. It's stuck in my head. I'm so thankful for the church. I am so thankful. Never before do you want to be unified with the church. There is protection in the church. There's a church that will hold you up, lift you up. We fight in a battle together. Hallelujah. Now I'm speaking to the enemy directly. Any demonic force that is here right now, we're coming for you. The church of the living God is alive and well. And the truth is, our weapons are not carnal. For they're mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. They're coming down. They're coming down. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what's going on in your mind or in your family or in your children. You can't have our homes. You can't have our children. You can't have my loved ones. They're coming down. Hallelujah. Don't look at what it looks like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free from what? Free from the bondage of sin. Free from the evil passions that plague you. Free from shame and guilt. 
free from regret, free from the vices that you've picked up to cope. Jesus will go out of his way to reach you. He'll go out of his way to pull you out of that pit he did for me. He did for me. I didn't think I was worthy. Man, I thought I was a piece of garbage. And really, by society standards, I was. But he reached for me. And he reached for a lot of you, too. Such were some of you. That's why we're so thankful today. That's why we can rejoice today. That's why we can look to him and say, I know that you're my Savior. I know that you're my Redeemer. I know that you're faithful because you've saved me so many times. I'm surrounded, yes, on every side, yes. Yes, what else is new? God is going to pull me out. He's got angels around me. I feel so important some days because he saves me and he's got me. And I don't want to go into heaven dragging my feet. I'm an overcomer. I'm going leaping. I'm going jumping with a church that is victorious, that is alive, that is fighting. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. But he will go out of his way for you. He will. He did for the lady at the well. The woman at the well, we know the story in John 4, 10. And he went to her and he, you know, back, back then the, the Jews went, I, in my study said sometimes 100 kilometers around Samaria because they didn't want to go through there. They had no fellowship or association with them at all. But Jesus said, I have needs to go to Samaria. And he was very specific. And he had someone very personal, one person in his mind. And he knew the result, what that was going to do, because revival happened after that. But one key lady who was not what society would think would be much hope. But she met truth that day. And so she was at the well, and he was waiting for her. And he confronted her with some truths. She was not a very, and, and let's be real, five husbands, she wasn't living, it wasn't, we, it's not all her fault. Some of those guys were probably some bad. But five husbands, is a bad track record. But he confronted her with some truth and told her that he had something for her that she would never thirst again. He had living water. He had salvation for her. And he confronted her and told her what her life was about, and she didn't, she didn't deny it. She met truth, and she submitted to it and owned it. She owned it. I don't think that, I don't think that if she would have submitted to it or if she made up excuses like so many of us do, and reasons and justifications, I don't think she would have got her blessing. And I don't think there would have been a revival. Fact is, we've all messed up. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. But God went out of his way to save a lady that probably most of us would look at with not very good thoughts. But he reached for her. He touched her. He, he saved her. And in turn... She, she went and told everybody. Now, we've all been through stuff. We can all justify what's wrong in our life and why we can't do this or do that. But truth is, God will pull you out of the pit. God will clean you up. God can make it so that you are totally transformed. If you knew me 20 years ago, you wouldn't think, of, you would not want to know me 20 years ago. And a lot of people in here, matter of fact, when I first came into church, there was people that told other people, stay away from that guy. He's bad. And I can laugh about it now, but I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. God reached for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Truth is, we have a hope in Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 1.3 says it. The truth says in 1 John 1.9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John 1.17 says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. 
truth is, Jesus wants to reveal himself to you today. He wants you to draw near to him, and he wants to draw near to you. Jesus offers us us salvation and reconciliation. He offers us salvation and reconciliation unto him. And through salvation, we can get a relationship with God, and it will totally transform you. It's just the beginning. Don't, Don't think that if you're sitting here today and you're baptized and the Holy Ghost filled, that's just the start. It's just the start. God is faithful to work in you until the end, until he perfects you. If he starts a good work in you, he's going to keep doing it. He's going to reveal, like I said in the beginning, if he's revealed himself to you before, he wants to reveal himself in a new way today. Hallelujah. And John 6, 7 says, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. This is after Jesus was resurrected from the cross. He said, but I tell you that the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. This is the amplified version. I'll give that to you. Yeah. This is the amplified. For if I do not go away, the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, my standby, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you to be in close fellowship with you. That sounds good. I want that spirit. I want that working in me. I want that truth living inside of me. I want that working through me because honestly, it's the only way I'm going to make it. I want that I want that overflowing in me. I want that so radiant in me. I just like we sung that song, your presence is heaven to me when I feel his spirit inside of me. I've said it before, the whole world can fall down. I don't care. I don't care. I have Jesus inside of me. It doesn't matter what comes against me. I have Jesus to help me. In Acts 2.38, you want to know how that spirit gets inside of you? It says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the truth. The truth. For the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a promise. It's a promise. He'll put his spirit inside of you, and you will never be the same. I've never heard not one time someone say they regretted that, ever. You will never regret that. You will never be the same, and you will always be changed forevermore. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want that spirit inside of me. Praise God. The three Hebrew boys, when they went into the fire, they knew their God. You could say they were saints already. They knew their God. They knew who he was. They knew who they served. But they went into the fire. And they never saw God like they saw God in the fire that day. He was revealed to them in a brand new way. And sometimes we got to go through the fire. Sometimes it just doesn't matter. It rains on the just and the unjust. And we were speaking today about how, you know, you look back on those trials and those tribulations, and, and you come out on the better side if you stay faithful. You, you can say, I probably wouldn't be here today if I didn't go through that. So sometimes as saints, it doesn't matter who you are. You got to go through those fires. But God's with you. God's with you, and he's fighting with you. And he revealed to himself to you in ways you'll never know. I'm speaking to somebody specific today. God's revealed a couple already. And that's good. And I thank you, Lord. So I know I'm on track. But he wants to reveal the truth in you. And he wants to work through you. He wants to grow inside of you. He wants you totally dependent on him. And he wants to reveal in you a way that he's never revealed himself to you before. And the truth is, the victory is greater than the battle. That's the truth. I follow truth. I don't want lies. I don't want some watered down truth. I don't want to be ripped off. I don't want no Krishlam garbage. I want the truth. I want God Almighty, maker and breaker of heaven and earth. I want him operating and working through me, inside of me. And I want other people too to come to that truth. I want them to see and I want God to reveal himself in you. And God wants to reveal himself in you in a way like never before. Let's stand today. It was said in Jesus' day, you know, Pontius Pilate said, 
what is truth? And he was looking him right in the face. He was looking Jesus right in the face and said, what is truth? I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. I want to say, Jesus, I know that you're true. I know that every word in here is true. I'm going to endeavor, and it may happen to you today. God can do it like that. And it might take time, but I want to endeavor to follow truth. I want to commit to looking for Jesus and him inside of me. Will you commit today to follow truth and say, you know, it's going to take, it's going to take some admitting on our own. We're going to have to own some things. And sometimes it might not be pretty. God's going to show you things. Like I said, when you come against truth, are you going to submit? Or are you going to be like how Paul was kicking against the pricks, going against God? It's a losing battle. Will you commit today to follow truth and say, God, I want you to reveal in me something new like never before. I want you to reveal in me something that I've never seen. Make yourself powerful in my life. Make yourself, you can, I want to submit to Jesus. I want truth to run my life. I don't want to live a lie. I don't want to justify my actions or my attitude or my pride. We want Jesus to have full control. Praise the Lord. I think it's fitting today that we find a place of prayer and just ask God to reveal himself to you. He will, I promise you. He will. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm inviting all that will come to the altar. And if you need the Holy Ghost or you need something specific, we'll pray for you. But ask Jesus to reveal himself to you that you cannot deny. Hallelujah.